Hey guys, I'm going to start a short series on efficiency, vehicle efficiency, specifically for EVs and the Model 3, but also vehicles in general. So today is part one. Today we're going to discuss batteries. Now, the, uh, the Model 3 uses lithium ion batteries, 2170 cells. I don't know the exact internal chemistry, but, um, but they do behave as the majority of uh, lithium cells do. So we'll be discussing some of the, uh, the fundamentals of lithium cells and how they behave at certain temperatures. Now, for those of you that are curious on resources, there are a number of places that I go to read up on this. One is a place called Battery University. Battery University is a website that has very good information on lithium batteries, various chemistries, their charge and discharge characteristics uh, related to temperature and load, and just um, they uh, they're very uh, very in depth site. But but they are the data that they give is is easy to comprehend, easy to understand, laid out in a way that the, the average person can can grasp it. Also. You can go to um, Sandia National Laboratories. Now, Sandia National Labs is a research facility, and they research a number of things, um, rocketry and different things for the federal government, but one of the items that they do research on are um, battery cells. So you can do some reading there. Uh, then also, there is a discussion forum called EcoModder. And uh, EcoModder is a forum that I frequent and it is a forum that is, uh, their purpose is to discuss the efficiency of vehicles, how to maximize your efficiency. So there's a lot of good data there. Uh, but basically, lithium batteries, such as the lithium batteries in this car and in most laptops and cell phones, were designed to be, um, to work best right at room temperature, roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you warm them up above that, you will increase the battery's performance, as in its ability to discharge amperage, but you will decrease uh, its overall longevity. So if you, say if you always, if the battery pack was always up at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it would discharge very well, it would perform wonderfully, but it, you would adversely affect its, um, its charge recharge uh, number of cycles so you would shorten the battery's life but this is why on the model s when you set it for ludicrous mode it preheats the battery because that added temperature increases the battery's ability to discharge high amperage when you dis when you um, decrease the temperature you decrease the battery's performance and you also decrease its internal capacity and it's pretty drastic now this differs for each chemistry, but just to use some just some generalities here, uh, just some some basic numbers. From 70 at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, my car is good for 300 to 310 miles of range on a full charge. Well, if we drop the the internal temperature of the battery down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, that would be more like 150 miles of range. So there's a drastic reduction, and this is just. The, uh, the internal uh, chemistry of the battery and its, its ability to, to um, sustain at those chemical reactions to produce the current that's needed, that ability drops with temperature. So um, now there are a number of things you can do to mitigate that. One thing is just parking the car in a heated garage. Although at that point you're using energy to warm the garage, so driving in your EV is that, you know, you're, you're, it's an efficient vehicle, but then you're paying to heat the garage. So that's one problem. Uh, one thing that you can do as well is uh, to condition, uh, to, to use the app and condition the cabin before you get in the car in the morning. And um, that warms the cabin up. And I, I know on the Model S it warms the battery. I would assume that it does on the Model 3. Those of you that have more information on that, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, but that's, uh, knowing that the battery is a little bit warmer, uh, it, it 
it really helps the battery quite a bit. And um, so uh, one other thing that you can do is uh, just drive the car a bit. The internal resistance of the battery increases as the temperature decreases. Now, as you then pull current off that battery, if it has an, a high internal resistance, that means that it'll be less efficient when you pull current from it, and you will naturally, through the internal resistance, you will warm the battery internally. So getting in the car and initially driving it will actually warm up the pack uh, appreciably. I mean, it only takes a few miles of driving and before you notice that the, the regen, uh, the regen limiting that Tesla has programmed in begins to go away because the pack's internal temperature rises. So just getting in the car, drive it gently, but driving it for a bit will warm the internal temperature of the battery and will increase your range. So that's, uh, that's something that you can do. But again, be very careful uh, when you're initially driving the car and it's really cold because it is hard on the battery pack to discharge when it's cold. Now, what's even harder on the battery pack is to charge when it's very cold. One way to mitigate that is uh, when, you, when you get done driving the car, plug it in and charge it immediately when the weather's cold. Because again, driving it, driving the car warms up the cells and therefore, when you get home, you can plug it in. The, the pack is already warm internally and the cells will accept a charge far better. You don't want to get home, park the car, let it sit for several hours, then plug it into charge because the, the internal temperature of the pack is very, very cold. And now the, the car does thermally regulate the pack, but it uses energy to do so. It'll take longer to charge and it's still a little harder on the battery. So in general, it's just better to when the weather is cold, to plug in immediately when you get home and start the charging process because the battery pack, again, has naturally warmed itself on its own. So uh, that concludes part one of this video series. These are just brief videos, they're not exhaustive, but I wanna cover battery pack, the HVAC system. Uh, I also want to cover uh, tire temperature and pressure as well as atmospheric conditions. There are a number of things that affect battery efficiency, that affect vehicle travel efficiency through the air, rolling resistance. There's a number of things that are affected when the weather gets cold. And so we'll be discussing those on an individual basis. So again, thanks guys for tuning in. Give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. If you're planning on buying a Tesla and you'd like some help on supercharging cost, go ahead and use my referral code. I'll put a link in the description below. Every referral that I get on the channel really helps the channel out tremendously. So go ahead and use the referral code below. When you buy your new Tesla, you'll get some help on supercharging expenses. And um, keep tuning in over the next few days. Every day to, every one to three days or so, I'll be updating this series on efficiency and I'll give you guys a little bit more information. And by all means, check out those websites that I discussed earlier. They go into far more depth than I did. This is just a very, just a, a 30,000 foot view of the topic. So anyway, thanks guys. Have a great day.